if you haven't signed in, please do so. Um, if you came to the sneak peek, we'll probably repeat some of that material today. Um, but I did want to uh, draw your attention to this Call of the Wild, uh, which has a great essay by the curator of this exhibit, who is Byron Price, who is not me. Uh, so, yeah, you should, you should read that. It's very uh, short. Uh, he writes really well, so it, it lays everything out. Um, but this exhibit uh, is organized by us in that we pulled it all together and are handling with the logistics. But Byron Price at the University of Oklahoma uh, is the one who really uh, curated it and did all the labels and picked out all the artwork that you see up on the walls. And why is he a good candidate for doing that? Uh, because he was the editor of the Charles M. Russell catalog, Raisin Egg. And he is the director of the Charles M. Russell Center for the Study of the Art of the American West at the University of Oklahoma. So they did this catalog raisonne about five, longer, seven years ago. Um, and since that time, we've been talking about uh, doing the show of Charlie Russell's wildlife work, which is a little bit different uh, take on the subject than most people are used to, because most people think of Charlie Russell as a Western artist not necessarily as a wildlife artist, but about 25% of his total output of paintings, sculptures, drawings, letters, etc. Um, featured some kind of wildlife. So he was in fact a really great wildlife artist and um, probably fairly influential on lots of artists working today, especially when you're talking about adding humor or motion or uh, predicament or something like that into uh, your work. This exhibit is divided into uh, sections. It's not necessarily chronological, uh, but we do have an early works section over here. So it, it doesn't matter you know, where you start, but uh, starting with the early works is probably a good place. Um, we also, as we were just talking about, have different quotations up on the walls from uh, artists and writers who uh, praised Charlie Russell and his ability at, to depict animals. Um, the title of the exhibit comes from his own description of himself as a harmless hunter. He uh, hunted in his early days in Montana, um, but then pretty quickly gave it up. And he would love to go to the camps, he would love to take part in all of that camping and western and cowboy life, but he himself didn't really hunt at all towards the middle and end of his life. Um, but he was always there. And when the hunters would come back with something, he would sketch it and draw it. He was another guy, I think, who was an inveterate um, sketcher. Um, so this exhibit talks a little bit about that. It also talks a little bit about his humor. Um, it's got uh, examples from the different realms of art that he uh, created, from paintings to water, or oil paintings, watercolors, drawings and illustrations, uh, illustrated letters, and sculptures. So the whole gamut of what he um, let's see, we'll move kind of around the room. Uh, this early work section, uh, Charlie Russell went to Montana, and depending on what source you read, either at 15 or at 16, I think he might have traveled out there when he was 15 and then gotten a job when he was 16 uh, on a sheep ranch initially, and then a couple years later he went to work for a hunter uh, named James Hoover, who's over here. Um, but I wanted to start with these two right here because this painting was something that he did maybe when he was 19 or 20 years old. So he started really early um, as an artist, just kind of uh, drawing and painting um, uh, scenes of buffalo hunts and other animals in western scenes. And you'll see some more developed buffalo hunts in the next room. But what I was looking at this morning, which I hadn't noticed before, is that um, Charlie Russell's uh, signature is one thing, but then he always put a little buffalo skull uh, down below it, sort of as his insignia. And this has a great cursive, very nice uh, signature, but then right there, there's a little buffalo skull. So you can see, even at this point, early on, he was thinking about that, and thinking about it in relationship to his signature. So that might be a fun thing to point out as you're walking around, and something that people might not think about or, or notice. Um, and again, you'll see more uh, buffalo hunts in the other room. 
Over the course of his career, he painted, I think, the number is 75 different buffalo hunts. So it was an ongoing interest of his, and probably an ongoing interest of his patrons. Um, another early work right here, uh, maybe painted in his 20s. Um, you can tell that he's uh, learning how to paint, how learning his craft. Um, he was a self-taught artist, we believe, for the most part. Um, and you can see that in these works. And even in later works, there's something of a naive quality that comes from being a self-trained artist. Um, but one of the fun things to get people to notice as, we, as you go through this exhibit is just how far he developed from images like this to some of his greatest works, which are in this room and in the other room. Um, Jake Hoover was the, the hunter that he worked for. And this may be uh, Jake Hoover right here. I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's called Hunter's Rest, and it's an early watercolor, and it kind of is a companion uh, to this. Um, and you can see why this is on the early uh, section, uh, both in terms of date and in terms of his style. He hasn't quite mastered, you know, how to depict all these creatures in a super uh, realistic or convincing fashion, but he's working on it, and he's working on also ideas that he'll repeat again throughout his career. Um, he loved painting these high mountain scenes. He loved painting something of a precipice. And then he loved painting the uh, landscape down below. It gives you a real sense of that kind of precariousness and height. And he'll use that later in his predicament paintings to heighten the drama of uh, the works. And here again, by this point, he's got his signature with the little buffalo skull uh, happening here, too. Um, I don't know that that one's signed, but anyway, that's a fun thing to look out for. So that's the early scenes, and then we're going to move on to more animal-related uh, images. Hunting, camping, and conflict. So uh, hunting scenes, uh, camping scenes like these, that you can kind of include this camping scene in there. And then conflict between animals uh, and between some between people. So we've got great... Uh, Simple, uh, simply wildlife scenes like this prairie fire, um, which shows a bunch of bison uh, traversing probably the Missouri River uh, in Montana, um, with some pronghorn in there as well. And it's related, uh, sort of in, in subject, to one of his greatest paintings, which is When Land Belonged to God, which is in the collection of the Montana Historical Society. Um, they never or very rarely lend that out, so we couldn't get it. But we did get a tiny sketch of him thinking about the buffalo and the wolf in that painting, and that's over there in the glass case, along with a print of that wonderful painting, so you can compare those two. Uh, you have our wonderful uh, grizzly painting, which was one of the impetuses, impeti, for, uh, <laughs> for this uh, exhibit. Um, the fact that we had this, and we're the National Museum of Wildlife Art, we're the perfect place to uh, host this exhibit. And then I did mention, it will travel on after this to three other venues. It's going to the Rockwell Museum in Corning, New York, to the Sam Noble Museum in, at the University of Oklahoma, and then to the Great Falls Museum, the C.M. Russell Museum, next summer. So it's really nice to we'll kind of do a little tour, and then be back in this region uh, next summer, with most of the same of art. There'll be some switching out along the way because a lot of these are works on paper and so they're a little bit fragile in terms of their ability to be uh, light exposure and to be out on display for that long. So that's, um, so things will switch out as the tour uh, progresses but also it's one of the reasons why it's a little bit darker in here than our normal kind of light levels um, and so people might ask you about that. And there's a couple signs that explain why is it so dark in here because of the light levels and sensitivity of these objects, and we want them to be around for future generations. So I assume you are all well versed on this wonderful work. Here's another beautiful uh, buffalo painting uh, from the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Um, we got great loans from all kinds of different institutions. So this what really was an organizational feat, uh, largely on our registrar's part. Uh, being in touch with all these different institutions, getting all these artworks in, um, letting, make, asking them if they would uh, be willing to loan, and then working out all these details. 
Um, so it is a big logistical task to organize one of these shows where you're not just pulling from your own collection. Uh, we have one, two, three, four uh, Charlie Russell uh, flat works, and then maybe five sculptures. So we didn't have the bulk of this exhibit. We had this great painting, and then we built upon it for the rest of it. Um, Adam, how did you yep. come to be in Montana? He grew up in Missouri, uh, and I think... I, St. Louis. It, yeah, St. Louis. Mm -hmm. um, so, the You'll film, the film has a really right. wonderful story. If you want to borrow the video from the library, if you have the VHS format, and you might be able to persuade Debbie Vassar to let, let you borrow the DVD, she has the exact same movie version on a DVD at 60 minutes, and we will be showing that on Sunday, June 1st. So I previewed it, as did John Wilson. So it okay. has that whole story of how he ended up See, in, Mon in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> so happy to help out. Broadway has it in the library yeah, right. and has it set up with the VCR. So if you want to All you have to do is press play. Yep. Cool. <laughs> so that's the answer to the question. You'll have to watch the video. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, or what I tried to say earlier was, I am not the Charlie Russell expert. So this is an exhibit that I, you know, I didn't curate it. So I, we organized it. So I can tell you some stuff about it, but I'm not the depth of font of knowledge about Charlie Russell. Um, so moving on. Uh, what I do know is that <laughs> Charlie Russell was a much more sympathetic portrayer of Native American life than his counterpart, Frederick Remington. So when you see Native Americans uh, in Charlie Russell's work, they'll be portrayed um, enacting uh, sort of behaviors that they don't normally would have would have done, they won't necessarily be shown as like warriors or marauders who are coming after the cavalry or something like that. So these are Native Americans hunting uh, pronghorn uh, in the background right there. There's a lot of hunting scenes that happen in Charlie Russell's uh, work. He wasn't against hunting, he just didn't like to do it himself. And most of what you see are uh, scenes of people hunting for food, not necessarily for sport. That is not true in this piece right here. Uh, but this, it'll be fun if you could ask people who they think this guy is. Um, and if you look really closely, you can tell that it's Teddy Roosevelt up on a big white horse on a bear hunt with a bunch of dogs. Um, so these kinds of scenes, uh, Charlie Russell certainly did throughout his life. He was capturing that whole sense of the West and all these things that were happening. Um, in, his, in his life and around him. Um, so you've got scenes like this. And then you also have some more troubling, perhaps, uh, scenes uh, like these in Roping the Wildlife, where these cowboys are out uh, roping a wolf in this case and roping a grizzly bear in that case. And this was an off-season uh, activity for cowboys who needed to make some money when they weren't uh, branching, um, and so you could earn money by bringing in different animals that were uh, considered uh, pests or vermin at the time. So there would be a bounty maybe on wolf heads or coyote heads or predators that would come in and uh, steal ranchers' cattle. So that's called Roping Wolf, and then this one alludes to that much more directly. It's called Roping a Rustler. So this guy has been rustling uh, cattle, and so they're out there um, uh, taking him in. Looks dangerous. I think so, mm. yeah, and dangerous and scary, but also makes for a really dramatic, uh, action-filled painting, which really, uh, Charlie Russell was drawn to that. Where did that painting come from? This painting is on loan from the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Mm -hmm. um, this has been reproduced many times, mm -hmm. so you'll see prints, yeah. like we were at the Elks Lodge the other night, and there's a print of that <laughs> in the Elks Lodge. Uh, Russell did lots of prints, and subsequently there have been lots of prints of his work made because it's so, so emblematic of the West, um, so charismatic, some of these images, so filled with action and narrative, it's easy for people to relate to. We've got a little Carl discussion question here, um, which families can, can use to talk, ask questions to, to their kids. And in this section, 
smaller pieces, drawings, illustrations, and studies. And this is fun because it brings out some of the humor. Uh, this great little drawing of a bear uh, wearing cowboy boots. And then in the background is a hunter kind of looking around. And it's called Tracks. So the bear has you know, been fooling the, the hunter, in this case, by wearing the cowboy boots. Um, and then this one is called The Bear at the Park are Awfully Tame. Um, and you've got the bears down here with the camera, and the tourists up here on the tree. <laughs> so it's a reversal of our normal role. And then this little bear is saying, um, Ma snapped that cute one on top. <laughs> and then this one uh, says, the red one is this one. The red one ain't so worse. So maybe this ain't so bad. Um, anyway, this was reproduced as a postcard uh, during his life. Um, so funny, humorous images. He was known for that. Another action scene. Um, the first title of this is The Bark of Beavers Henry Brings Me Out of This Scare. And if you think about Beaver is the name of this guy and Henry is the name of that kind of gun, then it, the title makes sense. Because it's Beaver's Henry, which is the gun. He's, the bark of it sh shot uh, brings me out of the scare. And then the second title is Between the Smoke, the Barking of the Guns, and the Bellerin of the Bear, it's like hell on a holiday. So, <laughs> great titles to point out. Some of them are tongue twisters, um, but that's one to talk about as well. We've got these two are from our collection. Um, we know that this one was reproduced in a book, and this one was too, but I haven't been able to find out exactly where that one comes from, working on that. And then, some more illustrations over here. Um, as with, say, Rungus or Remington or other artists working in that time period, if Russell was going to paint something that was going to be reproduced in a book, it wouldn't have been in color, he would just do it in en grisaille or in black and white tones. So I think probably this and this, he knew were going to be in a book, and so he didn't paint them in color. Uh, this is a hunting scene. Uh, this guy was hunting, but then he tripped and fell into a den on a mother bear and her cubs, which made the mother bear very angry, as we know. And then this is a predicament scene, kind of in small scale, of these two guys on a precipice again, with these mountain sheep who have come down the hill, and then they've shot one quickly, and it's called Quick Shooting Saves Our Lives. So you've got, again, that drama, action, uh, high, high tension moment. Um, well, again, what I was saying earlier about the scenes of Native Americans, this is called uh, The Land He Owned. There's another title uh, that was maybe Red Man's Hunting Ground or something like that. Um, and he's looking mournfully out across the plains, um, and it's sort of an imagined vision because by the time Charlie Russell was painting this, there wouldn't have been all these bison and elk and pronghorn all congregating in this number, because of course by that point, they would have all been decimated by your friendly European-American colonizers. Uh, and then this is just a nice little uh, study of a, a deer in a forest setting. Uh, he did lots of, of deers in mountain settings, um, and this is just a nice little study of it. So, do you have any questions about what's in this room? I'll say one more thing. Um, there was this man in here yesterday uh -huh. uh, who at least claimed to know quite a lot about Charlie Russell. Everybody's and expert. one of the things he pointed out is that he didn't care much to do skies. Mm. That there are very few, there's one there, that have clouds that they mostly just sort of, just, you know, maybe just a little wash of some uh -huh. color. And um, I, I, didn't, I guess I hadn't noticed that. Is that something that you all had paid much no, attention to? No, very good to? Uh, observation. Well, early on, like that. But, <laughs> yeah. but then so, it's beautiful. But what he did like to paint was moons. So yeah. you see a great yeah. moon in our painting, yeah. and there's a beautiful yeah, moon over here. There's one over here. Um, yeah. So I would agree that he doesn't have maybe that same uh, third, third, third division yeah. uh, that you sometimes see. Um, yeah, these mountains are pretty lifted up. Yeah. Um, and he, he has his composition divided in thirds in other ways, but um, it's definitely not sky, mountain, yeah. plain. Um, oh, this is a, you should pay attention, look at this, is a great illustrated letter on a piece of birch bark. Mm -hmm. A little piece of bark. 
and it shows you some diverse animals that you don't mm. expect, owls, herons, etc. Um, and if you want to do, if you're walking around and you want to have someone compare uh, an early work with a later work that really shows his development of style, you can compare that wolf roping with that grizzly roping. And you can just see, you can almost think that they're two different artists, or an older artist and a younger artist. It's just um, amazing. Part of uh, the reason for that, a biographical fact, which most of you know, is that when he was 34, uh, he married Nancy Russell, Nancy Cooper, who then became Nancy Russell, and she was 26, and she became sort of the driving force, getting him to uh, paint, became sort of his dealer, organized exhibits for him and shows, and really got him to ramp up his game. Um, and during that period, you also see this ramping up of his abilities and his skills. Let's go on the other.